So now in this video we're going to make a circuit that I think is really cool. We have a 555 timer there and it's being powered with 5 volts. So we're lucky if we get 4 volts out of it. Our load though is 2 blue LEDs that are in series. Technically you should give them uh, 6 volts but they will light up a tiny bit with 5 volts. A little leakage will come through. 1 kilo ohm resistor uh, protecting them. We will zoom in later on. So we have the 555 timer wired in a stable mode. That's the best way to wire it up for the circuit. The output's going to keep uh, going high and low. Uh, based on the uh, timing of the capacitor. So right now I have a high value capacitor. We're just getting pulses. This low value capacitor here is going to make it where the voltage is steady across the load. Uh, even though the output is rapidly uh, changing there. This uh, capacitor stores the charge and I uh, will power the load as long as we keep uh, topping it off quick enough. So here we'll look at the uh, A-stable circuitry of the 555 timer charging through the 10 kilo ohm resistor and uh, dialed there when the output is high. So it's charging up to two-thirds supply voltage. It'll go uh, quicker with the low value capacitor and take longer with the high value. We'll look at that. Then when it gets two-thirds supply voltage, it will discharge through that uh, resistor uh, going to ground right there. The output will also be low during that time. Basic A-stable mode 555 timer stuff. So now the way that this works, when the output is low, then we got 5 volts going through that diode, so we will have a diode drop, but it charges that capacitor uh, going to ground. It builds up a charge, it builds up a voltage. And then when it switches to high, so we got high over here, and then we got uh, the positive supply there, about 4 volts going in series with the voltage that we charged there, which would have been about 4.4 volts. So they add up to 8.4 volts, which gets pushed over into, uh, because we got a diode there, into this capacitor. So we're dropping about another uh, 0.6 volts. Each time the voltage goes through a diode, you lose about 0.6 volts. Uh, so ultimately, from that 8.4 volts, we should have about uh, 7.8 volts that will charge this capacitor as long as it doesn't lose too uh, much current. And uh, so that's about the maximum voltage we'll have to work with. But uh, we're getting pulses in this video because we're getting, you know, seven probably something volts in there. But then the current has to go through this load and it takes about six volts for it to conduct. And so it's going to drop probably about a volt or so after every pulse while it's lighting the LEDs. And when it doesn't have enough voltage to light them anymore, they basically go out. That's why we're getting the pulses. So now we'll zoom in and look at the actual circuit. And we can see a bit of the diagram from this. I think this is close enough. So we got uh, positive going through the diode anode without the band, cathode with the band, into the positive side of the capacitor, and then into the uh, other side of the capacitor, go headed to ground through the integrated circuit. So you can see that there, band up there, coming to the positive side of the capacitor, and a negative going to ground. It does connect directly to ground. Uh, pretty good. So we should get about 4.6 volts. And uh, if this capacitor is not already charged, it will also charge up uh, that capacitor, uh, but through two diode drops. So it'll be about 0.6 less than uh, that one. But in any case, now we got the capacitor charged. The output goes high and only about four volts though can come out of the output from the positive supply. You lose about a volt, uh, about a volt or so. Uh, but in any case, puts it in series with this capacitor, it's like series batteries. Their uh, voltages add up. And so for a brief period of time, you're probably going to have about 8.4 uh, volts total there. And then this diode drops uh, some of that voltage. So we're going to end up with probably about uh, 7.8. Uh, so I think I got the math a little wrong there, but uh, that's pretty close. So that's going to charge this capacitor. This capacitor just stores charge other than what the load needs. So without a load, it will get to... Uh, probably 7.8 uh, volts and stay there. But uh, since it's powering a load, it's uh, going to go down. It may not even be getting that full voltage, but it's getting enough uh, to uh, power the load. And now we're going to swap the capacitors. I'm going to yank this one out. And uh, we actually have the LEDs lit. I think that's because it is uh, not getting a steady voltage. So the output is probably rapidly uh, oscillating right there, even without a capacitor. But in any case, let's uh, try to get that capacitor there. So this is a 100 microfarad capacitor, and uh, this is a 10 nanofarad capacitor. So I think this is 10,000 uh, times as high of a value of a capacitor. Everything else is the same. So I think this is alternating, or uh, it's getting, uh, I think, 10,000 times as many pulses, I believe. And uh, 
So we should have a really steady voltage as far as LEDs are concerned with the 1000 ohm resistor in front of them. It is a steady voltage. They can't drain the capacitor enough to have really uh, drag down the voltage at all. So in any case, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, make sure you check out uh, one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.